Good morning, folks. This is Deb Delapiana, and this is your short take. So we're going to call this one, hell, no one told us we had to govern, because that is just exactly the way the GOP seems to be functioning. Today is the 24th of September. By the 30th, if the GOP does not get its shit together and pass a budget, the federal government will shut down. And I want I went through this in the last video. I'm not going to go through all the things that could happen as a result of that. But I want you to understand that the GOP, after this entire session, fell apart again. Because the most radical maggots in the group get their way every time with the hapless, spineless, gutless Kevin McCarthy. All went home and just left everything here. Governance in the public interest would have made them, because of the short time span we have here and the fact that they have fallen apart in conversation over this for two solid weeks now, would prompt them to stay in place and get this done. But no, they all went home for the weekend because you know what? It won't make a damn bit of difference to them if the federal government shuts down. They're fine, okay? They're fine. They'll collect their paychecks. It's just that the federal workers who work for them and for this government and for the people probably will not or will have to do unpaid work. I will put the article in here about what could happen when the government shuts down again, even though I put it in before. So let's talk about what governance is. So far, six bills have been passed since January of last year when they were sworn in, or this year when they were sworn in, six bills. None of them earth shattering. The only other things they have managed to squeeze through the house is their own national version of Ron DeSantis's don't say gay bill, which will not see the light of day in the Senate. That will not be passing here. If you allow them to take power in 2024, however, that will pass. Just exactly the same way a national abortion ban will pass because they've been telling you they're going to do that. And I believe a national transgender ban will pass. Keep this all in mind as I talk to you here. That is not governance in the public interest. That is oppression. That is the stuff of Nazism, okay? I'll tell you what governance in the public interest is. In the state of Massachusetts, the governor has made breakfast and lunch is free for all public school students. That's governance in the public interest. In the state of Michigan, Gretchen Whitmer, and her Democratic-led legislature has managed to pass 11 gun laws that help protect people in that state from gun violence, including children. The GOP doesn't want to talk about gun laws because all they want to talk about are donors. And the NRA is a big donor. And it always has been. And they don't give a damn about your kids being killed. In Pennsylvania... Democratic Governor Josh Shapiro has announced automatic voter registration. That's governance in the public interest. Let's go back to Massachusetts again, where the governor has proposed a new sex education uh, framework, which hasn't been touched or updated since 1999. That's governance in the public interest. What the GOP is doing is Donald Trump's bidding. They are not governing for the people. Donald Trump wants Joe Biden impeached. Joe Biden is going to go through an impeachment trial. Donald Trump wants the government shut down. Matt Gates is going to make sure he gets that. And while I'm at it, let me re reiterate something else. A guy named John Burroughs is running against Kevin McCarthy. This is your chance to get rid of this guy because, honest to God, Kevin McCarthy is not the Speaker of the House. The gavel actually, in reality, is just a show. The power in the speakership position varies between Matt Gates and Marjorie Taylor Greene. Right now, it's Matt Gates who has stated openly to Kevin McCarthy, 
We want a government shutdown and we're going to remove you from the speakership. If Kevin McCarthy were actually thinking about this nation, talking about America, a country he supposedly loves, a man who was elected to serve the people, the people of this nation who pay his fucking salary, if he cared about this country and about the people, he would reject the MAGA legislatures and legislature in the House and work with the Democrats to pass a budget before the end of this month. He is a coward of the highest order. He is a pussy and he is the architect of this mess because he agreed to go along with the MAGA GOP in the House. The entire House of Representatives is a shithole and everybody needs to understand that. And every single one of those seats is up for election in November, 2024. And you know what? If you, the Democratic Party voters, do not get out and get this done, then you deserve what you get. Those of us who actually do go out and vote, however, we don't deserve what you get. The GOP is no longer a legitimate party. They are a movement to create an authoritarian government in the United States. I heard somebody today on a thread on Facebook talking about how the hate is everywhere, even in other countries. Well, no shit. You didn't think that this whole movement that's here in the United States was a worldwide movement? They just elected the first fascist in Italy since Mussolini. We have Viktor Orban. We have Kim Jong-un. All these guys are the guys that Donald Trump hangs out with. We have Vladimir Putin. We have Vladimir Putin attacking the Ukraine, a sovereign nation. You know, maybe we can consider Ukraine a, a, an experimental America, an America at its very earliest stages. Vladimir Putin wants the oil. That's what he's doing. Don't kid yourself. And by the way, when Zelensky requested to come and speak to Congress again, Kevin McCarthy caved again to the MAGA Putin regime and refused him. Betraying the Ukraine is betraying ourselves. End of story. End of story. And I am not by any stretch of the imagination a person who likes war. I am also not by any stretch of the imagination a person who thinks that Vladimir Putin should go back and take back all of those Russian enclaves that he just did not want to give up because Vladimir Putin never wanted glasnost. He never wanted the Soviet Union split up. He was a KGB man. And he still is to this day. And it just figures that Donald Trump would love someone like that. Wake up, okay, before it's too late. This election is not like any other election. This isn't like 2016. It's not even like 2020. It's certainly not like 2008. And it certainly isn't 2004. This is not just another election. We will not survive as a democracy if the GOP wins. We will not survive. If you think after all you've seen since 2016 that we could possibly survive a full government of Republicans in both the House and the Senate and Donald Trump in the presidency, you're smoking crack. You need help. You need more help than Hunter Biden did. Governance in the public interest means you pass bills that benefit the American people, not that you pass bills to oppress certain people in, in, that live in this country. Not that you spend your time having oversight committees and meetings so you can support Donald Trump's whining on Truth Social about how he's so put upon and so hurt. That's not governance in the public interest. That's bootlicking for Donald Trump. I'll talk to you all later.